Wakanda Forever Black Panther 2 continues on its declining trajectory following my last video just a couple of days ago and the tremendous 73% Monday fall off that is much bigger than the 63 to 65% fall off than we saw earlier this year for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and Thor Love and Thunder. Is that going to play out into this coming weekend? Are we going to actually see, as some media suggests, a $70 million second weekend, or is that figure likely to be much lower? Let's get into it. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's great to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to the channel, please take a moment, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Now, as I stated in the last video, Wakanda Forever's opening weekend was nothing to shake a stick at. $181 million stateside here in the domestic market with another $150 million or so in the international market. It's a very good opening weekend. But when we look at relevant comparative data, when we look at previous films, when we consider things like the massive $250 million production budget, and easily another 125 to 150 million dollars in marketing costs for a film like this we start to see some of the problems the paint starts coming off the car the petals start falling off the roses this is a movie that still needs to get to probably somewhere around 800 million dollars to be in a comfortable profitability range and we know this because we know what major theater enterprises actually return back to studios based on domestic sales and international sales. These are actual things from publicly available financial reports from companies like AMC. So when we talk about a movie success or fail here on Valiant Renegade, we're always looking at it from a standpoint of financial profitability for the studio and the distributor that makes them. In this case, the Walt Disney Company. Now these are the numbers as they stand while I record this on Thursday night, November 17th. 213 million domestic, 187 million international for a worldwide box office that crossed the $400 million threshold with Wednesday's box office all turned in. As an aside, if you follow me on Twitter, you have probably seen my post from earlier today showing that I had projected that the Wednesday box office for this film would clock in right around $8 million and it came in at 8.1. See, when all of the trolls and Disney bots came on here and slammed the video from two days ago, questioning, who looks at Monday box office? Well, I look at Monday box office because it affords me the opportunity to be able to project with relative accuracy, pretty good accuracy, if I might add, considering my track record on here, what the future weekend is going to look like. And that's what we're doing here. Not only was Wakanda Forever's box office far worse on the Monday than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Thor 4, but it continued through the week. And I think that's going to continue into the Thursday numbers, which I project right now, probably somewhere in the range of six and a half to seven million dollars. Usually Thursdays don't get a bump, unlike a Tuesday, which is discount Tuesday that does get a bump. So I think we'll see a continued downward trajectory. That in and of itself is not the problem. That's relatively normal. It's how it's performing relative to its peer group and how it's, in this case, underperforming its peer group. And those peer groups, Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, both enjoyed a Monday drop off from its Sunday performance of roughly 63 to 65%. But both of those movies following that first Monday had drop offs of 68% in their second weekend. Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever, as a reminder, had a 73% drop off on its first Monday from its first Sunday. That's huge. So, if we are generous using this data, looking at how the week has tracked out almost a million dollars behind each day, both of these other films, Thor 4 and Doctor Strange 2, 
saying that Black Panther Wakanda Forever's second weekend drop-off is going to be 68% is arguably generous. If the 68% figure holds for Wakanda Forever, just as it did for Thor 4 and Doctor Strange 2, with very similar starts and weekday playthroughs based on percentages, then that means that Wakanda Forever Black Panther 2 will conclude its second weekend with somewhere to the tune of about $58 million. Not the $70 million that some places are projecting. And I want to warn folks that when it comes to Marvel films, more often than not, especially since the post-pandemic era when theaters reopened, that those projections have been on the high side, somewhere to the tune of 10 to 15%. I think that's probably going to be the case again here. I think on the top side, Wakanda Forever is looking at maybe 60 to the low $60 million at best if it really beats its mathematical projections. But I think more likely we're looking in the upper 50s at this point. Now, I'll be happy to be wrong. I'm not rooting for this movie to fail. And I want folks to understand that. But one of the things you have to realize is the demographic breakdown that I did not cover in the previous video. From what we know from intelligence, as cited in recent Deadline articles, the largest singular demographic that showed up for Wakanda Forever in its opening weekend was 32%, and those were women over the age of 25. That over-indexed by 50% from what the first Black Panther movie got. Now, what does that mean? That means that, well, either women showed up or other folks didn't to cause that over-indexing. But if we consider the fact that Wakanda Forever Black Panther 2, based on inflation-adjusted ticket prices, sold several millions worth of tickets fewer than its 2018 predecessor, then you have to start asking yourself, maybe it's the men in this case that didn't show up. Think about that for a minute. And that's part of the problem for this movie, and I think that's why it's not lagging out. As Marvel has radically altered their Phase 4 landscape, it seems like canceling men, and unfortunately, in the case of Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, canceling strong black men might have been a problem for them. Take care. 